So here I have a CD player with a uh, problematic uh, CDM9 uh, transport. I just laid down the, the tray here, I connected it, so it's seeing the switches. And the transport is somewhat uh, supported, so I can do my measurements of the servo underneath. And, okay, now I show you the problem with this one. This one came from a, uh, a car navigation. Old CD-ROM based car nav navigation. Uh, yeah, it worked with this one and it, uh, it didn't work anymore. So I buy, did buy a, uh, a 30 buck uh, CD player, took out the CDM, put it in the car navigation and now it worked perfect. But I would like to know what's wrong with it. I measured the laser power, it's good. So let's turn it on. And almost immediately it shows error. Now those Philips players, they have a built-in uh, service menu. And it's by pressing um, those two buttons and then uh, switching it on. So excuse me for this. Alright, and so now it shows you the software version. And now you can step through certain uh, service positions here. So you, this means the focus lock is working. So the focus servo and all the optics and uh, electronics is needed for that. It's working. Next step. Now the disc is spinning. And the focus is on. Next step, it shows error 8. It means it cannot read the table of contents. So that's not, not so such a big surprise. So we have a lot of servo working, lasers working, but it cannot read the table of contents. Now my thought was that maybe the permanent magnet of the swing arm is uh, not so good anymore. I mean permanent magnets they wear and the radial servo is like the, the most critical servo in a CD player so if the magnet is not yeah according spec anymore. So what I did is uh, I place this resistor over here. I show you in a minute what it is in the in the in the diagram. I'm just tacking it on now with my solder bolt, soldering iron. So right now the resistor is connected. It just increases the current through the radial coil that makes the radial movement and now we are going to try again so again this setup is to make measurements which are all below there and in fact let's turn on the scope and if you look what happens now with this resistor in place, it's working. It's working and it's just, it's searching like incredibly fast.
I think it's hard. To show uh, below there, but yeah, that uh, that's working like a charm. So, yeah, if it is the magnet or not, I also cleaned the inside uh, of the lens. It made no difference. I did do the... With, with the transparent disc, it's just a disc with the uh, CDR with the file removed. There is a procedure how to set up the the, the angle of the lens towards the plate. And it can be corrected by shifting the bearing plate. So I did that, I corrected a little bit, it made no difference. So the only real difference was uh, by increasing this, uh, this current, which of course yeah, should never be the case, but uh, yeah, you shouldn't touch that. But for this player, it uh, it means I can use it again. So in the diagram, so uh, this is the the amplifier for the that goes to the coil. So if you follow pin three, the output. It goes to the radial uh, coil, and this is the uh, 3.3 ohm resistor that determines the current. So I paralleled a 4.7 across it, so it's it's quite a increase. So so that's what I did. I paralleled here and cross 4.7. And I can show a little bit about the angle of the CDM. It's just uh, when I look at the CD880, which, which has the CDM4, but it's, it's the same principle. So here it explains how to uh, visually inspect the angle of the of the of the lens, and you see you you should do it in both directions. So in uh, this and, and 90 degrees uh, the other way. So you can read it in this service manual uh, how to set that up. And here you need a uh, The transparent disc I was talking about, a light source like a, a TL uh, bulb with a, with a uh, bar below it, disc, transparent, so, and then you should compare the line on the disc, the reflected by the disc and the line reflected by the lens. And I uh, should be within four millimeters. So yeah, that's that's a little bit uh, of adjustment you don't find in uh, in the in the three beam uh, system, of course. So yeah, and then the next uh, piece of movie I show you uh, how I took apart the lens and clean it on the inside. So here is the arm of the CDM9. Took it out from uh, the chassis. I wanted to clean the uh, the back side of the lens from very fine dust. Note there is a little potentiometer in here. I think it's for the 
is actually the feedback of the laser monitor so you can adjust the laser power so here are two screws that holds the lens and the, the pickup all together and at the back of this piece is the connection for the coil that moves the arm so you only need to desolder those two and then uh, there is no connection anymore between this part and uh, this part so desolder the two pins and then you have here so you see the feather is actually the conductor oh for the for the focus coil uh, yeah those are the outer two pins on the on the flat file there so yeah that's really the disassembly I know that there was some uh, dust and hairs on this ball bearing so I'm going to clean that out don't know why this is not completely working eye pattern is very strong but there's difficulties reading the first tracks and the, the, the zero track table of contents so I don't know maybe the magnet lost a little bit of force or it's just dirt so let's see uh, the eye pattern So this is how the eye pattern should look. It's nice and clear. And yeah. The single beam eye pattern is normally a little bit sharper than the three beam uh, pickups because of the noise of the adjacent tracks. So uh, but yeah. This is uh, how it should look with a good working player.